Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video and welcome back to my very salty E92 M3. I don't know what it is, but there's something about a very salty car which does look weirdly satisfying. It's really not good, especially for the underside of the car, so I should probably get it off, but do you agree? Like, it just looks cool with it all splattered in salt, which of course, at this time of year, the UK roads are absolutely smothered in. Um, of course, the last video you saw of this car on the channel was well, well, it wasn't good actually. <laughs> I tried to fix the car uh, by basically buying a cheap little 15 pound relay off eBay with the aim of hopefully fixing the starting issue uh, on the car. That didn't work and the car uh, at the end of that video was still not back running again. However, now it is, it's all fixed and actually the cause of the problem was kind of what I hoped it wasn't uh, and that was the starter motor. The car now um, starts so well um, starter motor, I think, to be honest, was going for a long time because uh, how it works and how it functions now is top notch. Now, I was aiming to fit that myself, um, but just time and availability was not on my side, so I had to just send it off, get it done, and bring it back to me nice and fixed. Um, today, I want to have a bit of a catch up with the car. Of course, you've all seen the title and the thumbnail of this video, and yes, we are going to be addressing a lot of various things um, which kind of sways me to think yes and no to that decision. Um, but to be honest, whilst I could do this video sat here in the car park, I just really wanna get back out and drive the car because to be honest, this thing was out of action for I think about a month. Um, I've recently got it back, in fact, this week, hence why I've done loads of miles on it and hence why it is so dirty. So let's hop in, get it fired up, go put some more miles on the clock and we can really just have a chat about this car, my ownership experiences and really where I'm at with things right now. <laughs> what I said in the title is a big, uh, it's, a, it's a big phrase, isn't it? And uh, reasons like that, it's a straight no. <laughs> this car for me hasn't always been smooth sailing. And the reason why I wanted to just get the car fixed and for the next video that's on the channel is, well, I say more of a positive note, somewhat. I didn't want there to be another repair video with this car, truthfully. Um, it, it's a great car, don't get me wrong, and I will always say that and always stand by that. It is a fantastic car. But as a daily driver, which is what I bought this car for, um, it's been very, very expensive. And I, <laughs> and I knew that that's what I was getting in for. Truthfully, I knew that it was gonna be an expensive car to run. Um, I didn't realize how expensive, if I'm being completely honest. The E92 M3 has always been one of those cars which I've just wanted to own, wanted to experience and live with. And when I sold my previous daily driver, which was a Mark V Golf GTI, I had always planned to make the jump from the Mark V to one of these. And to be honest, I ended up selling the GTI a little bit earlier than what I had planned. And so I thought, well, hey-ho, I've got to do what I said, get an M3, and that's what I did. Now, this car is a, an earlier car. Um, it's a 2008, so it's a pre-LCI. Um, Um, and had, I think, 68,000 miles on it when I bought it. So not crazy high mileage, but at the mileage where most of the big things that these things are renowned for hadn't been done. And looking back on that, maybe I should have got uh, a lower mileage one, but that's besides the point. Long and short of it, I have spent more than what I paid for this car a year and a half ago 
in maintenance, fuel, insurance, tax, all the things which are involved in running a car. More than the purchase price, which is a lot of money. And when I look at it like that, and in fact, when the car is broken and off the road, that's all I can think of. And in that kind of instance, I do kind of scare myself a little bit about what this thing costs to run. It's an epic car, as I will probably say a few more times in this video, but it's not a daily driver. And I know a lot of people in the comments of previous videos have said, E92 is not a daily driver. The Golf R should have been a daily driver. This should have been the track car. This would have never been a track car. The Golf R was always gonna be a track car thanks to my history, I suppose, with that kind of car. But this as a workhorse, as a daily driver, it's a lot. It, it really is a lot. And to be honest, this won't be used daily for much longer, I don't think, because I wanna get the S1 on the road as soon as I can, meaning this car can kind of be retired from daily duties, but daily duties was why I bought this car. So I'm worried that I'm gonna find myself wondering why have I got this M3, which I used to use all the time, I absolutely love, spent a lot of money on it. Why am I not using it? Should I just sell it? And that is something which does kind of come up in terms of when I think about stuff. Now, in terms of updates with this car, um, I did have quite a lot of things planned. Of course, recently you've seen um, the kind of visual makeover. We've got the genuine M3 competition wheels now on the car, and it's also been transformed with a full Enositec Midnight Green uh, metallic wrap by Monster Wraps. The car looks completely different and looks really, really nice. I really do love the color and love how it looks. Now, there was some other stuff which I was going to do being the key phrase there, because I'm not gonna do it anymore. I wanted to do some bits with the interior and may still do the odd bit here and there. I was gonna do um, some uh, gloss black or carbon fiber inserts on the inside uh, to cover up the silver bits, but to be honest, the car has silver wheels and also has silver exhaust tips. So I wanted to keep that actually still visible because it also shows the kind of color of the car. I know it's not the same color, but you know what I mean? Keep some of that heritage there. I also wanted to change the seats and I actually bought a set of seats, uh, the best seats, to be honest, for this car. Um, a set of Recaro pole positions. I actually bought them a long time ago. Um, unfortunately, got messed around quite frustratingly with that. Uh, I'm not gonna go into any other details about that, but long and short of it, I wanted to get a set of pole positions in the car still a really comfy seat so for daily driving it wouldn't be a problem and i was going to get them redone retrimmed um, in like a, a creamy tan black stitching maybe green stitching something really nice because this wrap is permanent on this car now i know that would have looked good and i know quite a lot of you guys are probably commenting like, oh my god you should have done that you should have done that it's not happening um unfortunately i basically without going into too much detail bought the seats uh, within four months they still had not arrived so luckily got my money back just wanted out of that situation and it's kind of put me off the whole idea now modifications on this car you're never going to get crazy amount of power i thought about supercharging it it's crazy money to do that um, and from what i said just a minute ago about some of the costs which i've incurred whilst owning the car anyway i didn't want to do that and it was always going to be a daily um, now, no, this car, like I said, will not be a daily for much longer. Uh, I plan on actually getting the S1 back on the road and using that as a daily driver going forward, which I'm really excited for because I do love that car and I'm really eager um, to actually drive it for the first time uh, once it's all back on the road and start enjoying it. Um, and I want to still see a purpose for this car, but I am worried that I'm not because I already have four cars and that's a little bit excessive. Hello. Hello, rear end. <laughs> God, it's slippy today. It's so 
sounds like a NASCAR, this thing. It really does. Um, now, going back to really uh, the kind of whole title of this video, I do find myself a little bit on the fence of, yes, I regret buying this car, and no, I don't regret buying this car. Financially, yes, I do regret it because I massively underestimated how expensive these cars are to run and how much could go wrong and to be honest how unreliable they are but in hindsight it's a 2008 BMW with a stupid silly uh, massive engine in the front of course things are going to go wrong but on the other side when I drive it when I drive it properly I think that's probably worth emphasizing because most of the time when I drive this car I'm just poodling along like what I'm doing now when I drive this car properly, it all makes sense. I absolutely love this car. No matter how much money I've spent on the car, keeping it on the road, repairing it, and upgrading it and making it my own, it will always be special and it will always put a smile on my face. This car will never be a permanent car for me, but it is 100% one of those cars I have on this list of a cars I just want to tick. I just want to tick that I've owned it, I've um, experienced it, and I've done exactly what I want to it. Now, some of the other cars you've seen recently, like the B7 RS4, W204 C63, maybe the W205 C63, uh, M3 competition of the F80 generation. Those are some of the other cars on that list. I'm not saying that this car is gonna go and one of those cars is gonna be replacing it. In fact, if I'm being brutally honest, no, it's not, because the S1 is theoretically gonna be replacing this car in terms of the daily runabout basically not really replacing it as a, as a side of like me selling this buying an s1 for anyone out there who wants to buy one of these cars you will love it and i really hope that my videos perhaps mostly being quite negative at times um i hope that hasn't put you off the car because they are absolutely fantastic you go to the nurburgring you will see two very common cars a porsche gt3 rs and an e92 m3 there's a reason for that they are incredible and it was never really my goal or plan to make this car into a track car. Maybe if I did, then I would, I wouldn't say love it more because I do really enjoy the car, but maybe see a different side of it. At the end of the day, it is not a suitable daily driver. And finally, I realized that now after 32,000, 34,000 miles, <laughs> I think 60, no. A lot of miles i'm not good at maths and it's been a great car and still will be a great car but yeah i don't think it's going to get that much use really in the long term going forward and then maybe i won't see a point of owning it which would be a shame but i do feel like i have ticked that box and that is me happy that is the main thing for me i have ticked that box anything from here is a bonus because it's been a roller coaster some good some bad but mostly been epic. The car is not for sale, I'm not saying it will or won't be in the near future, but I suppose, without really shooting myself in the foot, if anyone is interested in the car, let me know. But it's not officially for sale. I don't need to get rid of the car, I don't want to get rid of the car. But if someone is really keen on the car and would love to, I don't know, make it into a fully fledged track car or to just continue enjoying the car, then I would be happy to let it go. Now, of course, I do hope that everyone has enjoyed the videos of this car and will still continue to enjoy them because I'm not saying that this is the end of the road just yet. But I do see the comments, a lot of people saying that, I don't know, seeing some crazy things which are just massively untrue and inaccurate um, about this car and about my situation with this car, the Golf and the A45 and the S1 and whatever. And I thought it would just be nice to go for a little drive, get some more miles on the car and just have a bit of a chat about it. Of course, if you want to learn more about anything that I've done to the car, then there is relevant videos on the channel for that. But I think, to be honest, looking at M3s nowadays, E92s that is, no one really keeps them for a very long time. And I think to be blunt, the reason for that is purely the running costs. It's not because it's not a great car, and disappointing and heavy and slow and all that. It's not because, I mean, with my particular one, I can do this, and I can do this, drop some gears, and do this. I'd say, no, I don't regret the car. I do not regret buying it because when it all comes together, it is so worth it. Yes, it's unreliable, yes, it's expensive, but it's not like when it is reliable and it 
isn't providing loads of big bills. It's not like it's disappointing when I'm driving it. It's incredible. And so for that, that's what makes me come to the decision. Because in essence, you buy a car to drive it. You don't buy a car to look at it. It's a car. It's supposed to get you from A to B. And this car does that to me in a way that makes me really love it. With the theatre, with what I've done to it, and, and all, those, all the bits and bobs like that. So no, I don't regret buying this car, despite what people may say in the comments <laughs> about you know, my facial expressions when I'm filming this car compared to another car. Oh, you look so sad when you're filming the M3. It's a load of rubbish. It's an incredible car, and I'm sure anyone out there who also owns an M3, maybe the dailies their M3, um, I'm sure they'll tell you pretty much exactly what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, that is it for me today. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure to subscribe for all the adventures. Still to come.